by all organizations, uh, all projects, international development projects, but also any lot of other projects. I, I using logical framework approach, LFA. And um, the purpose of it is to bring clarity, coherence into the project. Uh, you want to have a tool that is really showing you what is this project in a short uh, overview form. You know what the problem, uh, what the project is about here. You use it for designing the project. You use it for planning and management. Um, lot for design, lot for planning, less for management. But but in reality, you can also go back to your logical framework approach always and see are you on the right track. If you need to take decisions on on this, you can go back and see is it following our project. Uh, not always done like that. It's a reference for monitoring and evaluation. When you have this overview of your project, when you send someone, when you each year has to write your report about how is it going, you go back to your logical framework matrix and you see are we following, where are we in the process to, to reach uh, our goals and so on. All the donors are using LFA uh, in some version. There's a little bit uh, different uh, it's a language with some different dialects, uh, someone uh, old colleague said. Uh, there's different ways to do it, but not very, very different yet. And the thing is that it can, all, can be developed in a participatory manner, the, the project. If you sit with your people, if the, the people you're working with, and develop this logical framework <coughs> matrix that I'll get back to, then it, it is a participatory process. It's very good if you sit and agree on this is our problem. This is what we want to work with. This is how we're doing it. So, these are the main headings in a, in a logical framework approach. The, when you do it yourself or with the stakeholders, uh, you will find out what is a development objective here. Development objective is not obtained within the period of the project, but it's something that is overall uh, for, for your project. It, it could be that there are some objectives, here says national sectoral objectives, which the pr project will contribute to. Let's say you, you want the whole, everybody to have access to water. That could be your overall objective, but you're working with something a little bit more limited because you don't have the whole country. You're only working in one village. Yeah. But you have something called the immediate objective. And that is what the objective that you're going to obtain in this project. That is the new situation that you want to have after you've finished your project. In the, so, so the day the project stops, this objective is obtained. Then you have some, th this is a kind of the new situation. Everybody is drinking clean water. And um, that's what you want here. You also, also have some outputs. Um, this is more tangible. I mean, this is, the outputs are leading to the objectives. For example, you have a number of water points uh, set up. You have some sanitation established. Then you could expect that people are uh, using it or more healthy or whatever to do here. So there's some outputs, then there's some activities. What are you going to do? Combined with a time plan, but activities, and then inputs. That is all what you need in order to get the project done. And it's put into a, a log frame uh, matrix here which uh, you can see the same headings here, development of the media objective, outputs, activities, inputs. So here's the description of it. And I'm taking a, an example. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's right. That, this is the connection here. Uh, the central problem in the problem tree. This is where you come from the problem tree to the to the uh, to the log frame matrix here, the central problem is here. Then you could have some underlying uh, 
uh, courses here, uh, things that you want to solve. And that should be maximum three uh, immediate objectives uh, formulated. This is a bit, this general for logic, log frame matrices in some dialects, you could say, but um, also for your, for your exercise here, in the, your application here. These are some tangible outputs, as I said, things you can measure. Yeah, and all of this is formulated as a new situation you want uh, to obtain. I'll give you an example here, and it's uh, very different from the one that you are going to work with, but it's something you know very well, because this is the log frame for the, this course, environmental engineering in developing countries. So if I should said, I, it's a three weeks course, and if I should put some uh, development objective uh, to this, I could say this is something that is not obtained. As I said, it's not necessarily obtained, this development objective. Let, let, let's start with the immediate instead, because this is more tangible. By the end of January 2015, 35 students have completed the course and learned to do WASH project design. That is actually my objective with this course, that 35 people have uh, passed the course and you have learned to do project design. Let's say that very clearly, shortly. Um, and you can see I put numbers quite specifically. I put a date and, uh, and, and try to be as specific as possible. Also very short, because that's the point of this, have short and precise information. Uh, but I also formulated a development objective that the number of uh, students here is involved in NGO project field work is increased by 50%. Uh, it's not necessary, but it could be I had an underlying uh, idea that I wanted you, uh, some of you to be involved in some NGO work. And I wanted to increase that number from what it was before. So I put this as the development objective. What is specific outputs? This is what you can measure. Okay, I can see that Friday last week, seven technical report, oh, it was eight, sorry, we have eight groups now. Eight technical reports were handed in, and on Friday, we have also seven, eight applications uh, handed in here. And on the 28th, that is the week after, in one and a half week, next Wednesday, 35 students have received the grades. That's what we can measure. That, that, that is, uh, I mean, it can be more difficult to, to measure if you learn how to do project design here. It's, it's more complicated. But at least the way we, what we can see when the, finish, when the course finishes is that we have some reports. So what are the activities we have to do there? We have to prepare some lectures, update the schedule, that is what I'm doing. Uh, give the lectures on time, schedule. I have to supervise group work during three weeks. Jorgen and I have to do that. We facilitate your oral presentation the uh, Wednesdays, so two times. We have to read your reports, give you some grades, and we have to inform DTU about the grades. So these are the activities we have to do. And in order to do this, we need some inputs. For example, some hours, some money, DTU has to pay me some money to be here and teach you. We need some rooms for the lectures. We need some textbooks from Bangladesh. Right? We, or okay. So if we look at the uh, yeah. So 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 here we have very shortly described what are the inputs activities. I'll, I'll come back to the logic a little bit later. There's one thing more here that I would also like you to do. It's very important to to look at the indicators and the means of verification. And that is how we can measure this. So it can be, as I said, a bit difficult to measure what you have, whether you have learned this here. So if we look at some indi indicators, um, it, it's about how, how we can uh, measure things. For example, it's not relevant to measure activities. Whether I was here, I mean, I was here, I did the lecture. It's not so relevant to, 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 to find uh, indicators. But for the outputs, for example, how do we know that these are handed in? OK, we have to check the, the reports that they are uploaded. We can see it on CampusNet. Maybe I should write CampusNet here. 
check campus net and grading delivered on time. We, we can see in the files, it would be the files. Uh, it's not really well formulated. But so this would be files of campus net, files of DTU that this has been handed in here. The objectives uh, indicators is that uh, if I, I mean, one thing is that you have passed, you have completed the course and learned how to do WASH project. It's difficult, but I, I would say if 90% of the 35 students here uh, has passed the course with a grade of four, then I could say that, uh, that it is obtained here, yeah, at least. Ninety percent. So I would say that is a indicator that you have more than four. Then you say good. Then you know how to do. It. If we look at the development objectives, we can look at the how many are doing field works. Last year it was seven uh, DTU students doing field works on on uh, Ubus projects. Next year we wanted to increase by fifty. So if there's eleven next year, then we have obtained that. And then finally, we also put some assumptions here. These are situations, invariant conditions, decisions which are necessary for the success, but is largely beyond the control of the project management. So we we can do some things, but we cannot. We have to also assume sometimes some things. We cannot control everything here. For example, uh, it will be difficult to. I mean, I can give the lectures and so on, but if you think it's just so boring and so terrible to be here, you would probably leave the course. I mean, so, so it's not enough. If, if I teach terribly here, if I do the activities terribly, we will not reach the outputs. You will not deliver your reports because you would run away. So we hope that the teaching will not scare you away. Um, how can you... How, you should learn to do WASH uh, project design here. And the thing I can see is that you're handling your reports. That's how I can check that you know things. I read the report and I see it. But it could be you have uh, copy pasted the whole thing from uh, somewhere. Last year's reports or from the internet. So I assume that you're not doing copy pasting here. Uh, because otherwise we would not, you would not learn anything if you copy pasted everything here. And how, how do you make sure that you're, uh, you're contributing, uh, you are, what is it, participating in uh, project uh, field work here? That is the assumption that many of you will join on Wednesday, the, where we tell about possibilities for doing uh, field work here. So we're hoping, these are some assumptions that you would come, uh, some of you. And here comes the logical. This is where framework becomes logical. If we're doing these activities, if I'm teaching, <coughs> facilitating, all that, and you're not scared away, then you will actually deliver your reports. If you deliver your reports, and you're not cheating, you're not copying the things in your report, then you learn. Then you learn uh, how to do watch project. And if you learn how to do watch projects, and you participate, and take interest in hearing about how to do field work, then you're probably going to be involved in doing field work. I mean, that, that's, I, I cannot control this. I mean, I, I can do my best, but I cannot really control these things. So these are assumptions. So they are, they are important. And that's the logic. This is the way when you, when you fill this, this uh, table here this afternoon. Try to make sure that that there is this this logic here. When you don't know what to put in the fields, take a look at this. About the assumptions, they are important here. Uh, when should you ask? Uh, when should you add an assumption here? You should ask yourself: Is the assumption important for the success of the project? Then you should ask it. Then you should do it. Otherwise, delete it. Don't put all kinds of silly assumptions. Uh, I mean, try to evaluate. Is it important for the success of the project? Will it hold true? Do you think it is it realistic here? Yeah. No. 
Um, I mean, if you know that it will uh, hold true, then you delete the assumption. There's no need to put an assumption that you're not, if you're sure it will hold true. If it is, um, or perhaps, then it's a good assumption. Maybe it will hold true. You think it will hold true. And if it's no, then you look at the third question here. Can the problem with the assumption be taken into account in the project design? Can you uh, somehow uh, change the project? If you find out the assumption will not hold true, I mean, in general, you should stop the project. Because if it's a no, if you cannot change the project, so, so, um, so you can make this assumption true, which is important, then it's called a killer assumption. If you know that this is not going to happen, if you know people are not going to pay for that sanitation that you're offering them, then you should give up the project. It's not going to work out. And if you can change it, then you, then you reformulate it. But some assumptions, and this is where we usually end, is, yeah, we think, we think so. We will do our best. We will create awareness. We will give campaigns. So we assume that people are actually taking interest in this and they are giving money. So they will do it. This is a valid assumption. Um, and then we keep it. <coughs>